What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Let me get to the spot. Let me get to the spot. Hey, everybody. What is going on? This is Plan Your Greatness, and I am your gracious host, Carlton Hamilton. And let's get started today. Today is Friday. Uh, what is it? July 2nd. And I'm back out here because um, um, getting things in order. A lot of things have been happening. Uh, my businesses have grown, so I've had to try to balance that. Uh, the opening of the new store, I've had to balance that. And just generally balancing everything else that goes along with life. Um, I started working out. If you've been following me, uh, working out again, if you started following me, uh, and first and foremost, let, let me say this. I, I'm not going to try to stay on here too long, but I did have a story to share. But I did want to kind of get you guys all caught up. Um, I started back working out. So today is day 24 of the Insanity uh, program. It's also day three of a tea cleanse. Uh, all natural tea that I, that I found online. So I'm actually taking that. I don't really do any other supplements I you know I, I want to get in shape but I want to do it naturally just through working out and just eating properly I don't want to do anything uh, you're trying to just you know trying to cheat the system you know so I'm eating better exercising getting plenty of sleep so my body can recover just doing the the simple stuff like that um, but if you if I'm if I look a little sweaty it's because I, I'm over here at a park it, it probably tells you I'm at the Escalante Center it's uh, right outside of my, my neighborhood um, there's a lot of gentrification going on so as I walk through you can see all the houses getting re redone and then this park is located in it, and they've done a lot of work here at the park and let me let me just show you the, what the basketball court looks like look at this the basketball court has this really really cool design on it so every time I walk over here it's always really just cool to see uh, the design so real cool but it's a really nice park nice neighborhood and just like you can tell in, in most areas when they when they're starting to gentrify something uh you see a bunch of white folks walking around with their dogs and, and everything so you know the, the neighborhoods neighborhood's pretty safe um but i wanted to get back on here um been inspired by uh, people i know my former roommate uh, Mark Davis, he, he gets out every morning. Um, so I may not have been getting out on live videos and walking, but I've been working out in my home office. Um, I, I set up everything. Um, I do everything from home. So um, that, that's how I've been doing it. But I wanted to, now that, you know, well, now that my schedule is changing, um, within the Insanity workout, there's two days a week. There's a recovery day and then there's an off day. So on those recovery days and off days, I'm going to go live and I'm going to come on. I'm going to tell some sort of story um, that has to do with just, you know, either the book. Uh, I should have brought it with me. Plan Your Greatness. Pick up a copy on Amazon. Or if you want to uh, DM me directly, I can get it to you and get it signed. Um, but that understand that's the draft copy. So that copy is actually in the works. My professor, one of my professors at Arizona State University, did the editing on it. So I'm in the process of editing that. So that can be the first clean copy. And then when that one goes live, then I'm going to also put together an audio book. So for all you audio book fans, you'll be able to uh, find that book and then just be able to listen along with it. Because I got some good stories, a um, lot of good stuff telling my, my little journey. But... As you can see in the title, the title is called The Jamie Moyer Story. And those of you that, that know me and follow me, I used to play professional baseball. And I got a chance to play with some very interesting characters. Some of them uh, play with and against. Some of them are in the Hall of Fame. Some of them are about to get in the Hall of Fame. Some of them are questionable as far as whether they should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, and then some of them set records as far as like longevity. Um, but just I, I, I played with a host of different characters in over over my nearly 10 years of playing professional baseball. It was a lot of fun and a lot of stories. And one particular story that I, I like telling, um, because I try to add these stories that, that give you a sense of um, like how I got to 
where I'm at right now. And as I tell this story, it goes back to a, a question that was asked. Um, again, if you know my journey, played professional baseball, was one of the top draft picks before I got injured. After the injury, my career just kind of spiraled out of control. Ended up uh, committing a crime and being incarcerated, and I was facing almost 70 years uh, in prison. By the grace of God, or whatever power being that you uh, adhere to, uh, I only got five years. And then those five years got reduced to four. And then I ended up serving a little, almost three and a half years of a sentence. Now think about that. I went from 70 to only having to serve three and a half years. Now that is a blessing in and itself. So people always ask, okay, so how did you go from really hitting the bottom and then actually getting to the point that you're at right now? Multiple business owner, homeowner, um, just just kind of turn things around. So. Hey, how'd that, where'd that come from? Um, just basically turning uh, my, my life around. So one of the questions um, that came with that as well was what, what was I what was I thinking about? What was my thought process as I went through? And I have a mentor and you can follow him on uh, on Facebook, uh, Dr. G, uh, George Henderson. He runs an MKS group. If you don't know what MKS is, just go in and and look for Dr. G. George Henderson. He's a retired police officer. He also owns AZ Chauffeur. So if you need some transportation around the valley, uh, when you get to the Phoenix area, reach out to him. You can follow him on Instagram or Facebook. All right, so I asked George, I said, what separated me from everybody else? Because if you do your statistic, if you do your search, statistical analysis search on the recidivism rate, they report the recidivism rate at slightly over 85%. And I'm here to tell you from my own experience of being into the system, I say that number is low. I say the recidivism rate is probably over 90%. Because if your life gets to the point where you are caught, not, 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 not you're committing crime, because there is a bunch of people, and some of y'all are probably out here right now, you know, um, there's a lot of people doing some bad stuff, just have never been caught. So all the people that are caught, if you get caught, there is something in that uh, mental dynamics of getting caught that spirals you into um, just expose, I guess, exposing your behavior to the court system. So now, now you're under this really, really um, restrictive system. So now you got to report to a PO. And so now all your bad behavior is going to be magnified. And so, again, it gets back to the, to the question that was asked by George. Um, or I asked George, how is it that I was able to turn my life around? And George pointed out something that I had not uh, given enough credit to. George said, look at your home life. I had both my parents in there. Look at your siblings. I didn't have a bunch of siblings that were getting in a bunch of trouble. And then he said, look at your life in sports. You could go through every level, whether it was little league, pony league, high school, college, professional. At each one of those levels, I played on championship teams. So I had something positive to attach myself uh, to. And um, unbeknownst to George, I actually was doing that while I was incarcerated because now you're in the most negative environment that you probably will ever be in. And that's prison. The conversations, the treatment by the guards, administration, everything, nurses, just just everything was was negative. I, I, I can't even really go into much more detail or I really couldn't even explain it properly to, to explain to you how mentally draining that experience was. Now. Every moment of every day, I wrote in a journal, and what I tried to do was attach myself to a bunch of positive stories where I either persevered, overcame, something where I was able to look back and say, you know what, I'm, I'm not as bad as this person, even though I am that dude that committed the crimes, but I'm not as bad as that dude that's in here. I can, I can change some of these things really simply just by the way that I think. And so that was my thought process. I didn't realize 
that as I talked to George, George brought that to my attention. And he said, that's exactly what you are supposed to do. You're supposed to take those experiences and be able to connect them to where you are right now. Because you literally don't have to uh, mentally be wherever you are. And that's from a book that I read called Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Franco. And he was talking about his experience in the concentration camps. And he basically said, yes, you can be somewhere physically, but you don't have to be there mentally. So one of the things that I did was I actually don't think I really spent as many mental days in incarceration as I did physical. Now, with that said, that, that kind of sets the tone of the story of the Jamie Moyer story. Now, if, if you baseball fans, if you know who Jamie Moyer is, Jamie Moyer played in the major leagues and pitched till he was nearly um, 60, not 60. He pitched in the major leagues till he was nearly 50 years old. I mean, and he never, he wasn't like Nolan Ryan, where he came into the league throwing over 100 miles an hour and he left the league throwing 100 miles an hour. Jamie Moyer came into the major leagues throwing, you know, because we were teammates for two or three seasons. And at the max, Jamie Moore may have maxed out at 86, 87 miles an hour. And especially if you think it in today's terms, I don't even think Jamie would even get a tryout because they, they're so bent on this velocity right now. But Jamie could pitch. And we were in class A ball together. Now, Jamie is three, almost four years older than I was. So Jamie was 23 and I was barely 20 years old. Now, give you some context of how, the, how that beginning of the season, how that season started. The year prior, I was in class A ball, 19 years old. I had actually made the all-star team, but I got injured and didn't pitch the second half of the season. So when it came time for uh, the, their, their selecting the teams in spring training, I found out later on that my manager, Cal Emery, did not want me on the staff. One, he thought I was too young, and he didn't know if I was durable enough. But in that offseason, I had had a meeting with uh, Dallas Green, uh, rest his soul. Uh, he's, a, he's the father of one of my teammates, John Green. Uh, Dallas told me, because I lived in the, I, live, I grew up in the Chicagoland area, and I would work out at Wrigley Field. And I was up there at the stadium working out, and Dallas Green told me, uh, I better not see you in the in the training room the whole year. And so as a scared 19 year old kid working out in the offseason, I literally said, OK, so I began to work out very, very, very intensely to just say, OK, I need to build my body up. I need to get stronger in the shoulders, the legs, whatever I said, because I do not want to. Uh, be on this disabled list. You know, he, he said, don't be on the disabled list because I think there's, you know, there's an old saying of uh, you can't make the club in the tub. So, so as the season starts, I'm in good shape, but my manager is an old school manager. He really did. He wanted probably some older pitchers, maybe some pitchers that had college experience. So I make that team and this is a higher level A ball team. Um, we have we have some bunch of veterans on there. Shout out to Dave Martinez. He was our right fielder on that team, manager of the um, manager of the Washington Nationals currently right now. So, all right, so we get this season started, and because I'm the young pitcher, because the manager doesn't really want me on the team, I'm the fifth starter. So that means every five days is my turn. Okay, so. I'm in the in the what they call the Carolina League. So that's on the eastern seaboard. So now at the beginning of the season, it's cold, it's wet, it's rainy. So as we're going through the rotation of pitchers, Jamie starts the season, pitches the first game, Jamie strikes out, I want to say, 14 batters in eight innings. Phenomenal start. Okay, so then we go through the second starter. I think it was Drew Hall. The third starter was Don Bethel. The fourth starter, I think, was Dave Koff. The fifth starter is me. So then they get to my fifth start. I struggle. Okay, so then now who's coming back around? Jamie Moyer is coming back around for his second start. Jamie Moyer gets a second start. Pitch is phenomenal. So Jamie's 2-0. and I think in the second start, he had maybe 12 strikeouts. So Jamie's looking great. So then we go through the rotation again. We go through Drew Hall. We go through Don Bethel. We go through Dave Koff. And then we uh, get, get back to me. My second start. And I believe we're in Hagerstown. I struggle again. So I've got two starts. I've struggled. 
I can imagine what the reports are because you have to send these reports back to Chicago every start for every pitcher. So I'm assuming that they said, you know, he's wild. Um, he may be out of out of his league. I, I would almost bet that they were really, really getting close to um, to sending me back down to lower a ball. And so there was um, just the trepidation in me. I'm trying to, you know, just get myself, keep myself in good shape. So now I'm thinking, man, I got I got to have a decent uh, start. So we go through the rotation again. Uh, Jamie has another third start. Good. I don't know if he won or lost, but he had another good start. So then again, we go through the rotation. Boom, 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 boom. It gets to me. I have a third start, which was better than my first two starts. But it wasn't all that good. I got a no decision. The first two I got losses. I got a no decision. But it was better. I wasn't as wild. Last, I think I went to, got into the sixth inning or seventh inning. So it was a decent start. But it wasn't great. So now Jamie has his fourth start. Does well. Jamie, I don't know, another 10 strikeouts or whatever. Um, so Jamie is on a roll. So again, remember I told you we're on the East Coast. Cold, red, wet rainy early in the month of april and uh so we go through the rotation and it gets down to me and what happens right the the day before that happens is um we have some rain uh the day before my start so we get some rain and so the next day it's my start but it rains and and this is the moment this was the, the moment of truth it rained that day and it rained out the game so then that that day at, once they called the game they just said okay no game today all right and i'm thinking you know okay we're just gonna go ahead and i'm just gonna rest up i get an extra day so the manager and the pitching coach shout out to rick kranitz uh i haven't checked up where he is but he was a um pitching coach for the Diamond, not the Diamondbacks, for the Milwaukee Brewers and the Colorado Rockies, I believe. So I haven't checked on where he is. He's somewhere in the game doing something, but that that was my pitching coach that year. Good job that he worked with me. But they pull us in the office. You got Cal, you got Rick, and then all of a sudden I'm sitting in there and Jamie's in there. And they look at me and they look at Jamie and they said, all right, Carlton, we want to keep Jamie on his regular rotation. He's pitching well. Um, he's struggling a little bit. I mean, you're struggling a little bit, So, but we want to keep Jamie on his normal rotation. I'm like, cool. You know, keep Jamie on his regular rotation. That's fine. But here's the, here's the deal. If you know how pitching rotations go, they're going to keep everybody else on their same rotation. So not only do I not just get pushed back, I miss an entire start. So they they put they let Jamie start. Jamie pitches well. Then I have to sit for another week, basically, to watch Drew pitch, Don, Dave, and then it comes back to me. So as it comes back to me, we're right at the very end of April. I am pissed. So, but what could I do? The num the, you know people lie, but statistics lie. But your, your, your numbers out there, as far as what you do on the field, the eyeball test doesn't lie. Jamie was pitching better than anybody on our staff. So you have to keep your ace. He was our ace at that particular time. You have to keep him in its normal rotation. So I'm like, I'm fine with it. So I walk out the room, and I'm just steaming. So we, we're going out there. We still want to get our running in. And I'm running like a madman. It's wet. It's dirty out there. And I'm running along the track, this gravel track. And all I'm saying to myself, man, that, that sucks. That's terrible. But I made a promise to myself. I said, you know what? I said, right now, they're pushing me back. They're pushing my start back. And I said, I don't like it. I said, but it's fair because we need to keep our ace on his, on his, um, on his regular rotation. I said, but you mark my words. I said, by the end of this season, I said, they are going to push somebody else back because I'm pitching so well that I'm going to get that. I'm going to have that meeting. And I said that to myself and I just, I, I just said, cause I was so mad. 
but I didn't want to pout or anything. I just said, I'm going to work hard. And I said, they are going to make that adjustment um, for me. And so now I had one more. I had another start and it was a it was a decent start. I, I didn't get a decision, but it was better than the other ones. Now came the month of May and I was able to start very early in that month, like first or second day in the month. I got a start. Guess what I did? I threw a shutout. OK, uh, nine inning shutout. My second start, I threw another shutout. OK, you see where this is going? My third stop, I don't throw a shutout, but I win. So I'm 3-0 and for, for May. And I believe at that particular time, my ERA was like .0 something. Okay? And so my fourth start, I win again. Dang near throw another shutout. My fifth start, I I think I throw another shutout or I give uh, one run. No, that was the game I almost threw a, a, a no-hitter. I threw a one-hitter. And then my, on my sixth start and my final start of the month was chicken night. And I always pitch very well on uh, the famous chicken. If you don't know who the famous chicken, go Google it. The San Diego chicken, the famous chicken. Um, so I, w I threw um, a complete game, nine innings. I believe I gave up four hits, one run. To finish out the month, I was 6-0. and oh. With a zero point, I don't see. I can almost remember the statistics. I was six and zero oh, with a zero point four one earn run average. I pitched, I believe, forty four innings, and I had like fifty one strikeouts. A phenomenal month. I was pitcher of the month. I was dang near player of the month, and so that moved into June. And so by June, I had another phenomenal month. And then by July, they had the All Star game at our stadium. I was the I end up closing the game. I didn't start the game. I closed the game and I pitched the last two innings and I struck out probably four or five batters. There were tons of scouts at the game. Um, I had now just become basically the, the, the best pitcher in that league. And I was one of the top uh, pitchers in all of minor league baseball. And that was through July. And then we finished off August. No, we finished out July. And then we finished out August, which was the end of the season. Now, right at the last part of the season, um, they had pulled me into a meeting. My manager and my pitching coach pulled me into a meeting, and there was a young pitcher that they had brought up by the name of Steve May. And so we're sitting in the meeting, and I'm I'm just thinking, yeah, whatever. We're just we're just having a little meeting. What's going on? And I I, I don't. I can't quote both of them for verbatim, but they had the same meeting that I was in four months earlier. Hey, Carlton. Hey, Steve. Steve, we are going to move you back. And I, and I can't remember if it was a, if it had rained or whatever, but more than likely it probably rained. And they said, Steve, we're, we need to push your start back because we want to keep Carlton on his regular rotation. And I just remember I sat there and I looked and I'm not sure if I actually really remembered that meeting that we had earlier. But I just remember looking and smiling and just thinking, well, I'll be there. I must be doing something right because they're moving somebody else. The very same meeting that I had that made me very pissed off. And I told myself that I was going to pitch so well that they were going to move me into that position and be making moves for me. And so. They end up keeping me on my same rotation because we were going into the playoffs because they wanted to set up the playoffs and have me start the opening game of the playoffs. And that actually worked out perfect. I started the opening game of the playoffs. I pitched seven innings. We were way ahead. I punched out 12 batters. And so that kept me in the rotation that I pitched the, that first game. We advanced through that round. We went to the championship round. I was able to pitch the championship game. Same thing, seven innings. I had like 12 strikeouts. We won the championship. So I tell that story, and I call it the Jamie Moyer story, because uh, him and his success created in me a desire to be much more successful than I was at the moment. I didn't get pissed off. I actually used that opportunity to be better and work hard so that they would make that adjustment with somebody else. And I hope Steve May, wherever he is, shout out to Steve May. I hope he's maybe somewhere um, telling a story on how that may have um, changed his life and 
and, and got him in a better situation. But as I do all the time when I'm on here, I, I wanted to use that story because it's very easy because we, we face situations. We want to get pissed off. We want to think that somebody is cheating us. We want to think that somebody is playing favorites and they may they may have very well playing favorites, but it would have done me no good to sit there and pout and cry and and at, as opposed to what I did. And that just says, you know what? Uh, don't get better. Get I mean, don't get bitter. Get better. So uh, it was really obvious that what I was doing at that very moment, because I say this all the time, is I was planning my own greatness. All right. This is your humble host, Carlton Hamilton, signing off. Plan your greatness. You know why? Because nobody else will. All right. I will see you all on the next time that I have a day off and I can sit over here and share and talk to you guys. Talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for joining me.